<clears throat> All right, so this is a cold reading, and Mo is returning. He's a businessman. He's returning a coffee maker yeah. that his friend gave him at the exchange department at like Best Buy. And this is the department where you return the coffee maker. And you, you know, this is sounds. I can already feel this is going to be a nightmare. Um, <laughs> so, all right. So, and so you're returning it, and you're on your lunch hour. And here we go. Take a moment. Think a little bit about where you're coming from and who you are. Drop into that personal space to connect yourself to truth. Jordan, think of what this feels like in your life where you felt something similar to this in your life, where you felt any, and think about that feeling. What is that that you're feeling? And I want you to take that feeling and start thinking a little bit about what you're thinking when this happens in your life. And I want you to say, oh, this is kind of like this. The scene is kind of like that. And if it is, great. So take uh, that essence. And I want you to just, if you feel like you're probably going to be a little bit more charged in the scene, I'd like you to take a couple of breaths and Mo, same with you, to think a little bit about what's going on with you. Just kind of feel it. What is this thing that I'm feeling right now? Where have I felt this? And if it's if the vibe is similar and you feel like you'd be a little bit charged, take a couple of breaths because that will physiologically get you a little bit more lightheaded. And think a little bit about what you're thinking about and what you want. Take that essence, put it into your roles. And now you're the roles and you're at Best Buy. Here we go. Now, but right before you start, use that personal thing to dive into the scene. So Mo, tap that like a piano key and you do the same Jordan. Tap that piano key and dive into the scene. And now you're the characters ready and a cool reading action. Hello, is anyone here? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you wait a minute? Not really, I'm sort of in a hurry. I'm sorry, we just got a TV in the back and I was checking something out. Are you the repair person? No. Then what were you checking out? Oprah, she's doing the show about transsexual accountants who want to marry their pets. Right now she's talking to some guy who used to be a girl who's in love with her with this French poodle. I, I'm, and... I'm, sure, I'm sure it's very interesting, but I do have another appointment. To... Right, so what can I do for you? Well, I was given this copy maker and I don't like it. <laughs> oh. Aren't you going to say anything else? Um, I'm sorry you don't like it. <laughs> this is the exchange department, isn't it? Do you want to exchange this? Why didn't you say so? It isn't obvious. Why else would I want to come here? Gift wrapping? You do gift wrapping here? No, that's the next office over. Then why would anyone come here for gift wrapping? Sometimes people get confused, like you are. I'm not confused. I, if I thought this was gift wrapping, I would have asked for gift wrapping, right? Right, but if you thought this was the exchange department, you would have asked for an exchange. All you said was that you didn't like this. And what does that sound like to you? A complaint. That department, it's on the third floor. Okay, let's, let's start over. I got this coffee maker. I don't like it, and I like to exchange it. Why? I just... I just don't like it. I don't like it. That's it? Isn't that enough? Not always. I don't know if I just don't like it is covered by a store's exchange policy. Look, you know what? I Stay calm. Let me get the binder. What's that? The rules and reg regulations for exchanges. All that? How difficult can one exchange be? You'd be surprised. Now, let's see. I just don't like it. Ah, uh, here we are. <laughs> I just don't like it. You're joking. They actually have a rule on that. They sure do. See? Customer just doesn't like it. <laughs> see, complaint department. What does that mean? It means that you have to go upstairs to the complaint department. And what happens there? Usually they'll listen to you and send you to the exchange department. But I'm already at the exchange department. I know, but you didn't go through the proper channels. Okay, what if I told you I was already at the complaint department and they sent me here? Then you'd have a complaint slash exchange transfer slip. Do you? No, I don't. Then you'll have to go upstairs to be sent where you are now. Look, I know that you have rules, but is it at all humanly possible that you could just show a hint of compassion? Compassion. I don't know, let me check. 
Let's see, compassion. Here we are. Well, that's interesting. What? Well, it appears in extreme cases, I am indeed allowed to act what might be referred to as the customer's best interest. It's a judgment call. But is this an extreme case? Oh, yeah. Why? Because if I don't get some help, I'm pretty sure I'm going to rupture a blood vessel in my head, causing uncontrollable psychotic behavior that will result in the death of anyone in the near vicinity. Now, what would you classify that? Extreme. Let me take care of this for you. Thank you. All I need is your receipt. My what? Your receipt. Don't tell me that you didn't bring it. No, it was a present. My friend gave this to me, and I said if I didn't like it, to exchange it here. Then get the receipt from him. I, I can't. He went to Bangkok on business today. My, you do seem to be in a peck of troubles, don't you? So you won't exchange this? Extreme situation, remember? I know, I know, but no receipt, no exchange. Now, if that was a defect, that'd be a different story. Really? Well, how's this? You broke it! I know. Now it's a defect. So what's the story on that? Uh... Defects don't come here. They have to be sent back to the manufacturers. But you just said that you have- I said defects were a different story. You didn't let me finish. You have no one to blame for your predicament but yourself. And before the blood vessel thing happens, I think I'll go to lunch. Have a nice day. Scene. Very good, you guys. Good start. Really good. Nice. Nice job. Nice job. You guys are both cast so well for this. Uh, Jordan, you, you, this is just, it's fun kind of finding your casting, you know, and the kinds of roles that you should, this is the kind of role you should audition. Because even though you're, you're, the character you're playing is unbelievably annoying, I still love you. <laughs> I still like you. Like you are still so lovable and likable, even though you are the worst of the worst. Like you, it's like the DMV, going to the DMV or going to any place and you just drive people crazy, yet somehow you came off in a likable manner. So that's a, that's a huge win. So just know that this is a kind of a cool scene for you to have in your little file for a potential showcase scene in the future. And Mo, this is also a great character for you, you know, as far as the stress level, the tension. So I think you guys, as far as, you know, it being a cold reading, I think you would get called back. I think they would like you and they would be like, we want to see you guys again. So here's the notes I would give you. Um, first of all, if it, it is a relatively long scene. Yeah, okay. we were going to ask you, like, we didn't know when, when to cut it. So we just thought, you know, let's just try it. Well, uh, my my thought would be, because what you're going to have to do at this point is you're going to have to probably cut it in. You don't have to, but you might want to explore cutting it into two pieces. Just first half, second half. And let's just get the first half down, and then we'll get the second half down, and then we put them together. But my 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 the reason I'm suggesting that is um, because you're going to have to kind of go in here now and start really working on the framing of the jokes and the pauses and the punchlines. Because if you noticed, the scene was working really well in the beginning. You know, it was really funny. And then it was kind of like hitting the same drum, the same mm -hmm. beat over and over and over again. And there was no variation here. It just kind of got tiring because it was sort of the same gag. Do you know what I mean by that? Uh, I know it. I know that you mean like we're doing the same thing over and over again. Well, I'm saying the scene. Okay, look, you know, as an actor, you're not supposed to worry about the audience. But at the same token, you do kind of want to go. All right, well, what's going on in the scene right now? If I just play it the way that you guys play it, it's very sort of flat. Yeah, it kind of. It sounds. doesn't really go anywhere. In other words, what's going to work on this scene really is going to be coming from Yuma. In other words, you said, I'm going to pop a blood vessel. I didn't believe that. Okay. So what I'm saying to you is, Jordan, Jordan's lack of engaging with you is the thing that drives you crazy. Oh, so I, so she, she, she may, make, makes me more and more. She makes you more and more flustered and angry because she yeah. doesn't give you anything. 
because she is so matter of fact and like nice and I have to look up compassion. I have to look this up. Uh, with, uh, I don't like it. I have to look it up. That was all really good stuff. It was really working up until that area. And then the scene just sort of petered out. Yeah. So that to me means you might have to be a little bit more inventive in a sense, kind of just ask, okay, um, I don't want to be aware of my audience, but I also know that this is a, this is a farce. Isn't it a farce? So uh, we, we suspected so, yeah. Yeah, so if it's a farce, we also know that the characters are very extreme, which you guys are doing. In other words, very odd. You know, you, know, you're, you represent people at Best Buys, at DMVs, at the places that we hate to wait in line for, the airport. You know, you represent those people, okay? And you represent Mo, us, yeah. having to deal with that. So who is the straight person and who is our funny person primarily in the scene? Uh, Jordan's the funny one. Right, which means you have to suffer. Yeah. Like you have to go absolutely fucking batshit nuts. Okay. And the, the humor to me of this is the fact that you're just like freaking out and Jordan just stands there and goes, let me look it up. Uh. <laughs> and just the fact that she says, let me look it up. So like innocently drives you even more crazy. Right. We've, no, no, no. We've all been there. I've been there. I've been there many times when I lose my patience and the person doesn't engage, just sort of stands there matter of factly and just sort of, <laughs> you know, and, and the fact that she won't engage with you, Mo, is the humor of the scene. And that is going to organically, naturally make this scene build. Yeah. So you got to work on the pacing. The scene has to move faster and you got to get rid of all of your pauses except for your jokes. Get rid of every single pause unless there's a punchline. And then the last thing I would say to you is um, think a little bit about, and this is again, this is more of a directorial note. So you know, I don't like you to think about this because I want you to think about being the character. I want you to think about what's going on with me. I don't want to be aware of the audience. But mm -hmm. as an actor, I also know that maybe it would be, if I'm dealing with a farce, in general, my jokes tend to get more and more colorful. You mean like swearing? Well, I'm saying my the jokes in the scene may very well get more and more zany and wacky. Uh. Not necessarily do they have to, but I think of a scene frequently, like, as I've said many times, like a fireworks ceremony that builds. And we have the big ones at the end. Well, you guys were doing really good. And then we were still waiting for the ending of the scene and it was over. Oh. I was waiting for the big climax and there wasn't one. So you kind of leave us kind of waiting going, where is it? So I'm saying the way you can get there without being aware of the audience and do it organically, because I don't want you to think about the audience. Mm. I want you to think about what you're feeling. And same with you, Jordan, like the fact that I am not going to engage. Why don't you? Do you get pleasure out of this? No, I don't mean to be annoying. It's just I follow rules. You I follow rules. This is just the way it is. You know, and part of my job is to not engage, not, you know, fight. You know, if somebody's very, very upset, I let them do their thing because the customer's always right. But I have my job and the job says you go to the third floor. The third floor, the third fucking floor. I, I have the coffee maker. It's right here. And so when you take that coffee maker, it's not like a light little smash. It's like out of rage at the system. Okay. It's rage at the shit, the red tape you have to go through to return a fucking coffee maker. I mean, to me, if I were you, and I was in your position at this point, I would have taken the coffee maker and smashed it way sooner because I would be so upset that this person is driving me nuts. Right. And then by the time, by the time that you finally feel like you made some progress, then she says, do you have your receipt? <laughs> and that's when it's like your ears are going to pop out of your freaking head. Right. All right, you guys, I got to move on. But you guys got the flavor? Uh, yeah, so basically, Brad, all things, all things like equal, 
uh, this, the strength of not making it uh, too flat is going to rest in in me and my and my. I mean, pride. I don't want you to feel like it's on your shoulders. No, no, I I, don't, I get that, but I, I kind of get the gist of, of what. Well, what um, I would say to you, you know, all you have to do is go. What's going on with me right now? And ask yourself, how am I feeling? Now, have I ever been in this position? Yes. Have I ever been to the DMV? And it gets worse each moment. Um, have I ever been at the airport? And, and the situation, I get more and more nuts waiting in line. So just more truth stuff, yeah. It's all about honesty. But if you look at it just from truth, your patience would organically and naturally become less and less. Yeah. And that is what we connect to and 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 relate to. And that's to me what's so funny about it. It reminds me, it totally reminds me of me because I have so little patience for stuff like this. I just <laughs> I don't do well with stuff like this. So it reminds me of me, and um, that's what you should do. And you know, you, Jordan, just keep doing what you're doing. Just very sweet, nice. I'm just doing my job. And you know, when she says, I don't like it, let me look it up. Like when you say that, Jordan, Mo, there's just no fucking way that's in the book. And then she shows it to you and it's there. Oh my God. It's like, I, I feel like you would take the book and just rip it up. Uh, yeah. yeah. I can't fucking believe it. It's actually written there. I don't like it. Subsection seven, A, you know, part two. I don't like it. And she shows it to you. Oh my gosh, you would go fucking crazy. Ah, uh, I see. And you just keep dodging. This is, you know, somebody put oh, you wrote, Jordan, you are perfect for this. I was laughing the whole time. I was too. You just, I was too. I was laughing at both of you. But I did find that about 60% into the scene, I started getting tired. Yeah. And I started getting tired of the same routine. And mm -hmm. because you were not being affected enough remember acting is about being affected by your scene partner mm -hmm. and you are not allowing yourself to be affected enough by the situation okay understood but i would call you both back and oh. mo is now auditioning and booking things and jordan you should tell your dad it's about that time you're gonna have to get some headshots because you're doing really good Okay, yeah. so just keep doing good work, okay? Thank you. All right, you guys. Thank you. Keep up the great stuff. I can't wait to see it next week. Cool. Thanks, Brian. All right. Thank Appreciate you. it. All right. Bye. You're returning a coffee maker at a place like Best Buy or something, right? Pretty much, yeah. And she's the one who's supposedly, quote unquote, helping you. Um, well, that's the idea. But... That's the idea. Okay. All right. Let me turn off my camera. Let me format. Is it, Jordan, is there any way to get a little bit more light on you? Is that, is that uh, possible? Um, I think that's the best I can do for now. You might want to order a, um, you know, a, a ring light on Amazon. I'm sure your dad knows what I mean. So just to, yeah. Yeah, you want to get a, you want probably want for everybody who are doing self tapes. You want to make sure you have a good ring light, and then also you can get a mic if you're doing your taping, your self tapes with uh, your phone. They sell really great inexpensive stereophonic mics that you can connect to your phone. And so the sound will be a lot better than the mic on your phone. So I would encourage you also to order something like that. It'll just make you pop. So anyway, pretty cheap. I think it's like 25 bucks or something, so. Okay. Cool. All right, so are you guys ready? All right, think, take a moment, think a little bit about where you're, where, what's just happened, what, where you're coming from, who you are. Um, you know, it's still you with a different name, of course. And um, and I want you to sort of tap into what's happened leading up to this and kind of use your own self, you know, and where you've experienced something similar so that you can kind of get a vibe of where you're coming from. And then take that vibe, take a couple of breaths to kind of charge you up, especially if you're kind of a little bit emotional in this scene. And then tap back into that real truth of, of you and now take that essence and put it into the character that you're playing. And now you're the character. Okay, so you're now in the in the scene with that vibe. Okay, and again, if your character is a little bit more emotional, make sure you take a couple of breaths to kind of charge you up before you start. Do that, okay? And then right before you start, I want you to tap like a piano key, that that honest thing that roots you in truth. 
that makes Mo connected and that makes Jordan connected. And you're going to use that to dive off into the scene. And all you're going to do is play off of each other. Okay, just react, keep it honest, and don't perform. Here we go. Ready? And action. Hello, is anyone here? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you wait a minute? Not really. I'm sort of in a hurry. Sorry, we just got a TV back and I was checking something out. Oh, are you the repair person? No. Then what were you checking out? Oprah, she's doing the show about transsexual accountants who want to marry their pets. Right now, it's this guy who used to be a girl who wants to marry his poodle and- Okay, um, I, I'm, I'm sure it's very interesting, but I do have another appointment. Right, so what can I do for you? Well, I was given this coffee maker and I don't like it. Oh? Uh, are you trying to say anything? Um, I'm sorry, you don't like it? This is the exchange department, isn't it? Oh, you want to exchange it? Why didn't you say so? Well, isn't it obvious? So why else would I want to come here? Gift wrapping? Oh, you do gift wrapping here? No, that's the next office over. Then why would anyone do gift wrapping here? Sometimes people get confused, like you are. I'm not confused. Okay, I, if I thought this was gift wrapping, I would have asked for gift wrapping, right? Right, but if you thought this was the exchange department, you would have asked for an exchange. All you said was, I don't like this. And what does that sound like to you? A complaint that department's on the third floor. Okay, um, let, let's start over. Uh, I was given this copy maker and I don't like it and I want to exchange it. Why? I just, I don't like it. I just don't like it. That's it? Isn't that enough? Not always. Look, if, if you, if calm, you don't want to- calm. Let me check the exchange regulations for, for the store. I get, what's that? Exchange policies and rules for the store. All that? How difficult can exchange be? You'd be surprised. Now let's see, I just don't like it. Oh, here we are. You kidding? They actually have a rule on that? Sure do. See? Customer just doesn't like it. See? Complaint department. What does that mean? It means you have to go to the complaint department. What happens there? They usually listen to you and send you to the exchange department. But I'm already at the exchange department. I know, but you didn't go through the proper channels. Okay, what if I told you I was already at the complaint department and they sent me here? Then you have a complaint slash exchange transfer slip. Do you? No, I don't. Then you have to go to the complaint department to be sent back here. Look, I know that you have rules and everything, but is it at all humanly possible that you could just show a tiny bit of compassion here? Compassion, let's see. Well, that's interesting. What? I'm apparently allowed to do what is referred as the customer's best interest, but that's in extreme mm -hmm. cases only. It's a judgment call. Would you say this is extreme? Oh yeah. Why? Because if I don't get some help, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna rupture a blood vessel in my head, okay, causing, un causing uncontrollable psychotic behavior that will result in the death of anyone in the near vicinity. Now, what would you classify that? Extreme. Thank you. Let me take care of this for you. Do you have a receipt? A what? Don't tell me you don't have a receipt. No, this was a present. My friend gave this to me and told me to exchange it here if I didn't like it. Well, go ask your friend for it. I can't. He went to Bangkok on business. My, you do seem to be in a peck of troubles. So, what? You're not gonna exchange it? Extreme situation, remember? I know, but no receipt, no exchange. But if it was a defect, that'd be a different story. A defect, huh? Really? Okay, how's this then? You broke it. Yeah, it's a defect now. So what's the story on that? Uh, defects go back to the manufacturers. But you just said that- I said, could be I said it was a different story. You didn't let me finish. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> now this whole predicament is your fault. And I think I'm going to go to lunch. Have a nice day. Uh, that was really, really great, you guys. I loved it. I loved it. Those were awesome. Nice. I loved it. It's so good. You guys work so well together. Um, I mean, I, I've never seen you play synth comedy as, as well, Jordan. Um, you were really funny too, Mo, as well. But like, Jordan, your timing is amazingly awesome, especially for somebody your age. Thank you. And, I uh, need to work on it. I needed to, but I got well, a lot of help from Mo. Well, good, good. So uh, I would say do another funny scene. Um, you know, if you can find something. Um, and uh, I thought the pacing was way better. I liked both of you. Um, I thought that there was a lot more of a, a build in the scene to that blood vessel moment, you know, that I felt like you really were cracking, Mo. That, and I also was watching to see, what, what are you guys doing? Are you really listening to each other? And you were. And I was uh, also very connected to both of you. Like, I, I really did feel like I, I knew you, you, you both. I've been in your position, Mo, and I've met people like you. Jordan, you're, you, you have this way about you of just being so annoyingly likable <laughs> like it's amazing that you're still like so adorably likable in this scene but you are like it just it's so there's nothing that mo can do because you're so you have such an innocence about you and you keep it it's bitingly innocent and and mo it looked like you were just your head was going to explode because you can't i mean you just can't yell at her because she looks like this innocent thing and mm -hmm. and she just dodges you she just keeps like dodging every dart you throw at her and she will not engage, which was really funny to me. So, and, and the way you were trying to be helpful, Jordan, was really funny. Like you're, 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 you know, let me look it up. Let me look up compassion. You know, let me look up this, you know, I don't like it. Like you were, and again, it was very endearing and likable the way you did that. Um, and very matter of fact. So I, I just thought it was terrific. I loved it. It was a great way to start class. So um, it's definitely your best scene, Jordan. So way to go. Cool job. So find something else, you guys. Really good, more really good too, Mo. Both of you rocked it. So um, I would say pick another comedic scene and keep working on the pacing stuff because it seems like you did work on the pacing, making sure that it was going faster, that there were not a lot of pauses everywhere. So it seemed like you worked on that. Yeah. We we watched. Uh, we actually did some back and forth thread, and we also watched a uh, Seinfeld clip as well. Good. And so you kind of uh, saw how fast they they go, right? Uh, yeah, hundred percent. And also from last week, you told me, uh, being angry doesn't mean, you know, trying to have a talk fast and have a high pitched voice and stuff, mm -hmm. Good. uh, which I actually ran it by, uh, uh, my, by my speech therapist and she agreed. So now I'm actually practicing being mad and talking slow. Nice. So, so that's been nice. way help. Way help. Cool. Very good, man. Well, yeah. keep up the great stuff. Gotta get headshots, Jordan. It's time. Tell your dad. I've got a lot of questions. All right. I know well, that my dad tried to call you, and I he think did? he called him back. Oh, yeah. I think we, maybe we played phone tag or something, but, you know, we'll figure something out. If maybe we have to do a lesson or something one-on-one -on -one just to kind of get you all set up. But we'll figure it out. I have some photographers in mind if you need some help, so. Um, That'd be great. I already found a makeup artist, but I don't have a photographer. Yeah, usually they provide, a, they usually will provide a makeup artist too, if you, if you don't have one. Most people don't bring them with them, but you can certainly bring your own and not pay their makeup artist. So, you're, but you're already, okay. yes, yes, go ahead. Uh, this, is, this is not a question. I'm actually done with those, but uh, I just, a, a note, um, you said in one of your really old videos on, on YouTube, it's completely random, but you said in one of your old videos on YouTube, you would go into like a, the audition room in real life and you would see like people practicing their, their lines and being worried and stuff. Well, mm -hmm. all you would do is, uh, is basically just, you know, the emotion and, that, and that's it, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, I thought that was just you telling stories, but then when I was shooting this thing, it, I was actually seeing it in real life. <laughs> Whereas me, all I was doing was just like thinking, thinking the, the improvs and stuff. Good, but, uh, yeah. Yeah, so they were probably doing all this stuff to practice because they were worried it wasn't going to be good enough. And then they then they tried to perform what they had in their head or what they practiced and then it probably was stale compared to what you did. That would be my guess. Yeah. So I would, I just I just felt a note that I I, I saw I saw your experience. Nice. In the way. 
Nice. Awesome. Well, you guys, way to go. All right. Good job. Nice, nice stuff. Cool.